Again, you know, as you uh, go through the transition on tools, um, you may be feeling pain from uh, casting specific defects. Uh, Stephanie or Rachel, can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the casting defects that are shared on screen here? Sure, we can start with the first one you see where you have the flash. So usually that you see that one either comes from a mold not closing properly or it's just a natural wear of the mold itself where it starts to grow at the parting line. So you need to either resync the mold or do a glue fit so you can remove that flashing. But it is indicative too of the age of the mold that it's gonna potentially start growing over time and you may have to start considering how much flash are you getting and do we need to consider when to build a new mold for that part. Yeah, I can probably talk about shrink and maybe the bent or twisted. So knowing uh, that we are inspecting every piece, Tim, when this part comes out of the mold, it's important that it maintains its shape and its flatness. So building fixtures, flattens fixtures ahead of time into the overall project is important in this situation. So for instance, when you know you're running them, uh, they're a thousand degrees, we go ahead and put that in the fixture to ensure that as it colds, it stays flat. Even with the shrink, that could be a cooling too fast or too slow problem. Uh, we do learn a lot about that in the FEA that Rachel mentioned a few times. The FEA analysis really helps us understand where it cools and where it heats um, or it's too hot. Maybe that's a better way to say that. Um, but you know, sometimes parts come out and they have a little bit of shrink in them. So we definitely have to do a root cause at that time. Yeah. And some of them too are, for example, porosity, so you see hydrogen gas porosity and regular porosity. So that's the boundary understanding its melt process and making sure all their furnaces are within the um, levels they need to be for that particular part. Because obviously there's going to be some parts that are actually going to require some hydrogen in there more than others, depending upon the application they need. So you have to understand too what the expectation of the end use is. So again, I know some uh, marine life parts require a little bit of porosity. They can't have no porosity at all. So it really just making sure that your foundry knows where the application is going and why it requires a certain level of porosity or no porosity at all. That's perfect, Rachel. And I think just to tag on to that, Tim, Batesville Products, that it has added, you know, um, electronic degassers to avoid a lot of those problems. 